Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I finished my Rebot Your Own Challenge and I'm going to start another one. So yes, I have completed my Rebot Your Own Challenge. I have read 100 books I already owned without buying any new ones. Um, I started on the 6th of November and the first book I read was this one, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, which was a reread, which I very much enjoyed. Um, I finished on the 26th of January. The final book uh, was The Survivalist, book 12, The Rebellion by Jerry A. Hearn, which was definitely not as good as The Outsiders, but I still had a good time with. Um, so yes, during that period of what, two, two and a bit months, two and a half months, um, I read 100 books from my shelves and books that I already had on my Kindle. There was one book I read during that period um, which I didn't own before the challenge started, so that was not included in that total of 100. Uh, and that was Come Toy With Me by uh, Cara Summers from this Mills and Boone Blaze Double. So this was very kindly sent to me by Sarah from the channel The Bookish Knitter uh, because I wanted to take part in a read-along she was doing of it. Um, so she very kindly got a copy shipped to me. So yeah, that didn't count towards the 100. So I got through it far more quickly than I have done it in the past. So it's the third year running that I've, I've done this challenge. Um, I think previously I'd, I went up until kind of March or April, but I was really determined to get it done by January um, this time around. And so I set myself up for success. I set it up in such a way as to make it easier for myself. And I think reflecting on the last couple of times I'd done it, the thing that made it most difficult to, to get through that 100 was adding additional books in. So having caveats that meant I could read other books, um, but those books didn't count towards my challenge. So for example, um, you know, like saying I could get books out in the library to take part in book clubs and things like that. So this time I didn't do that. I, I made sure that any commitments I had during what I expected to be the period of my Read What Your Own Challenge, that I already had the books for those before I started it. And so they counted towards it. Now, that did mean that I ended up buying a few books just before starting the challenge um, so that I could read them during the challenge, which is perhaps somewhat counterproductive. But, but it worked for me anyway, and I, and I got through it quickly. Um, and I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. I really appreciated reading books I already owned and not being constantly distracted by new books. I don't know about you, but I find I spend a lot of time looking for books, like browsing through deals on Kindle, browsing through secondhand bookshops and things like that. And there can be pleasure in that. There can be an enjoyable exercise. But I've come to realise it can also be a bit of a futile exercise because you end up with books that you just never get around to reading because you're constantly adding to the pile. I think it taps into our kind of like built-in natural kind of hunter-gatherer instincts, doesn't it, to try and gather as much stuff as possible for, for the long winter, as it were. Um, but in the in this age of endless supply, um, we end up gathering far more than we need. And let's be honest, we, we live in a society, so it's like modern capitalism relies on people over-consuming in order to keep the wheels of commerce churning. And that's one of the things Amazon has become great at, is persuading us to buy things we don't need. And it occurred to me during this challenge that Kindles are a great example of that, like Kindle ebooks, because I buy so many ebooks in daily deals, like 99p cheap books, which I never get around to reading and which I wouldn't have bought otherwise. But because they don't take up physical space, there's less reason for me not to buy them you know I can't it, it's I can't really justify going out and buying you know like 50 like 50 books for a pound each and then coming back laden with paperbacks with all these books that I need to find somewhere to put but you don't have that problem with Kindle books and I think that's one of the secrets of, of Amazon's successes making us make it very easy for us to buy things we don't need where there's no real downside apart from spending the money in the first place um, anyway, that's a bit, <laughs> a bit of philosophy from me. So yes, so, so I've really, really enjoyed the process of just choosing books I already own and reading books I already own. Um, and I've ended up, you know, reading reading 100 of them, 
but I still, you know, that's that's the tip of the iceberg in terms of my unread books. I'm thinking about doing a video called How Many Unread Books Do I Actually Have? Um, because I don't know, but it's a lot. It's, you know, it's 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 four figures. It's in four figures, um, if I include Kindle books, and probably even if I didn't include Kindle books, which is ridiculous. And so for that reason, because I enjoyed, uh, because I enjoyed the challenge, but because it hasn't really made a dent in my in my unread TBR, um, I'm going to do it again. I've decided I'm going to do it again, but with some differences. So this time around, as I've said, I was super focused and I did what I termed the master of my domain version of the Reboot Your Own Challenge in that I had basically no caveats. There were no reason, there were, there were no, like, no excuses, no reasons I could use to go out and buy a book. Now, I did receive a few books during that during that time, including the one I've already talked about from Sarah, but also, you know, particularly over Christmas, books from, from friends and family and things like that. And I have had a few authors and publishers send me books um, during that period, but I didn't, uh, apart from Come Toy With Me, I didn't read any of those books. And so that meant I got through the challenge more quickly. So having done the Master of My Domain version of the Read What Your Own Challenge, I'm now going to do the ultra chill version of the Read What Your Own Challenge with loads of caveats. I expect this time around it will take me a lot longer. Um, but I'm really up for doing it again. I really, really have enjoyed it. And it's made me realise how many fantastic books I've got that I just wouldn't have got around to otherwise. Now, I have allowed myself a purchase. Um, so immediately I finished the, the Reboot Your Own Challenge on Saturday. So Saturday evening, I bought, I did buy myself a book. In fact, I bought myself six books. And, and this comes back to that, that concept of how the world nowadays seems to be conspiring to make us consume, you know, to purchase more things than we actually need. So there was a particular book I remembered whilst I was doing the challenge. And I thought, I really want to read that again and see if it's as crazy as I remember it. So I remember this being probably the most violent book I've ever read. <laughs> the book is called Army of Devils, uh, and it's from the Able Team series. So Able Team is a spin-off from the Matt Bolan Executioner series, like very cheesy, action-packed um, men's adventure books. This particular book is just insane from what I remember, and it's like 30 years plus since I've read it. So I decided that as a reward for finishing the challenge, I would buy myself that one book. Now it's out of print, can't get it on Kindle. Um, so I was looking online, I found a copy of it for I think about seven pounds on Amazon UK, but it would have been shipped from the US and it looked like the, the, like the seller had really bad ratings. I also found on eBay, someone selling a job lot of six books from the Able Team series, including that one, and they were asking £12. Um, I put in an offer of £10 and, and we kind of agreed on a midway point of £11. So I paid £11 for six books rather than paying £7 for one book and it takes you a lot longer to get here. So anyway, I've, I've, I've made one purchase of six books, but no more purchasing. Um, so yeah, that will be with me soon, hopefully, and I'm really looking forward to, to reading it again. So yeah, much much more caveats, uh, much looser rules this time around. So I'm saying um, I'm completely like, able to go out and, and seek out review copies of books, either from authors or publishers. So I've been provided with a few uh, review copies of things during my last Rebot Your Own Challenge, but I didn't seek any of them out. They just they just happened. Um, so yeah, I will be seeking out um, review copies of books I'm interested in reviewing. Um, I will be able to buy buddy uh, books for buddy reads, group reads, and, and also for projects I'm doing on the channel. So like the Disturbing Books Project or the, um, the Stephen King Project. Stephen King does have a new book coming out reasonably soon, um, in May, I think, and I'll probably still be doing the challenge in May. So I am able to buy books for things like that. But they won't count towards the 100 book total. And if I can, I will try and get them out of the library instead. So in fact, one of the other things I did on Saturday evening was go onto my library, my local library app, um, and have placed holds on three books that I need for various challenges and things like that. So rather than buying them, I'm getting them out of the library. Um, but again, when I read those, it won't count towards the, the 100 books. Um, and then the other big one, so obviously I'll still be able to receive books as, as gifts because that's kind of out, out of my control. The other big one is I will allow myself to buy books. If I find 
books in some of the trashy series that I'm reading, like the Survivalist series, if I find those books for, for a, you know, a decent price, I will allow myself to buy them. But I'm not going to go out of my way to look for them. Funnily enough, when I went on eBay and was looking for these Ableton, for that Ableton book, the same seller that I've ended up buying it from has got loads of like little job lots of like executioner books and, and all sorts of trashy books. But I managed to restrain myself and, and not buy any of those because, as I said, you know, I've already got dozens and dozens of unread Mac Bolan books. So whilst I could buy more to fill in some of the gaps in my in, in my collection, I really don't need to. I don't need more Mac Bolan books. I've already got more Mac Bolan books than any one person would ever need in their lifetime. So what I'm going to try and do going forward, and you know, certainly for the duration of this next Rebot Your Own Challenge, but also beyond that, is buy with purpose. So I was thinking about this the other day, Shelley Swearingen put up a, uh, a video talking about kind of her goals for, for 2024. And one of the things she talked about in that was what like her, her habits on watching TV and how she's trying to watch less TV. Um, and I was thinking about how I watch TV and, and I would describe the way I watch TV as I watch with purpose. So I, you know, I might hear about a show, I might research it a little bit, decide that that's a show I want to watch. And then I sit down in front of the TV and I watch that show or that movie or whatever. What I don't do is spend half an hour scrolling through Netflix trying to find something that looks like it might be good, right? My book buying habits have been the opposite. So I definitely don't buy books with purpose or haven't done in the past anyway. I books I, I buy books with abandon, with, with, with no control at all. I buy books that I think look like something I might want to read one day rather than buying the next book I'm going to read. So going forward, I need to try and restrain that and only buy books if I know I'm definitely going to read them in the next you know month or so rather than books that just end up going in the garage or on the shelves or, or hiding in the corners of my Kindle and never getting read. So I'll definitely do, be doing that for the next 100 books and, and I intend to, to do it thereafter as well. We'll see how well I do. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's my experience of having done the, uh, the Rebot Your Own Challenge this time round. As I said, read 100 books. The average page count of those books was 252 pages. I'll put a list, if I can fit, all the books in the description for this video. I'll put a list in the description for the video. Um, so you can see everything that I read. Um, so yeah, 252 pages feels like a reasonable length to me for a book. And funnily enough, uh, the Survivalist book 12, the final book I read was exactly 252 pages long. So there's a nice bit of kind of synchronicity there. So yeah, 252 books. I definitely read some shorter books, but I also read some longer books. I think the longest book I read was The Forgetting Moon by Brian Lee Durfee, which was 750 pages. So, you know, three times the, the average. Um, so 252 pages doesn't feel like a you know a ridiculously short book. Um, so yeah, I'm quite, I'm, I'm pleased I didn't cheat, if you like, too much. Cheat's the wrong word, isn't it? I'm pleased I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't only read really short books. I, I tried to read things I wanted to read rather than focusing on, you know, really tiny things. But I definitely read some shorter books in there. So anyway, yeah, that's been my experience. If you're doing the, uh, the Read What Your Own Challenge Good luck. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're getting through some, some really good books that you maybe wouldn't have got to otherwise, despite the fact that you bought them. Um, as I say, I've really, really genuinely enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to doing it all over again. Um, so I will keep you updated uh, on my progress in my kind of weekly wrap up videos. Um, but aside from that, I'll, I'll leave it there and say, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.